All right, continuing with some more examples. Um, here's finding some sums of different kinds of sequences with different given data. Uh, find the first, the sum of the first 60 terms of the sequence 1 plus 1.1 plus 1.2 plus 1.3. We want an exact answer to that. So the absolute first key is, is it a known kind of sequence? And in this case, it's arithmetic. If it's a lot of terms and it's neither arithmetic or geometric, it's going to be really hard at, at our level. Um, it's hard to find formulas for, for summations, um, shortcut formulas for the summations besides the ones we know. But this is indeed arithmetic. The common difference is 0 0.1. The first term is 1, and n is given here because it's the first 60 terms. So this is moderately straightforward. However, the shortcut formula for an arithmetic sequence is how many terms there are times the cheesy average of the terms, which almost would never work for any random sequence, just taking the average of the first and last, but it works for an arithmetic sequence, which is beautiful. So you take that average and then just multiply by how many terms there are. Um, and here, so you need to know the last term. Okay. Well, that's just given by our standard formula for an arithmetic sequence, which we've seen already in these videos. Um, 1 plus how many steps, 59, that's 60 minus 1, of step length, step size 0.1. So you get 5.9 plus 1 is 6.9. Lots of people get that wrong for this kind of problem. Now you just put it in. On average, the terms are 1 plus 6.9 over 2. That's about just under 8, or just under 4 on average, times 60, so just under 240 or 237 as it turns out. Okay, so this is a key thing. Even though we want the sum and our core formula is this guy, the formula we actually end up using is the master formula for the terms, because we need that term. Very, very common. Okay. Um, yeah, as I say in this, lots of people kind of guess that it's going to be 7.0, and that's just not true. You haven't done 60 steps starting from 1. You've done 59, so it's not quite 7.0. Okay, <laughs> what about the first <laughs> two terms? Excuse me. Pop a cough drop here. The first two term, 12 terms, rather, of 90 plus 30 plus 10 plus 10 thirds plus, and I have this kind of weird thing. Give, give me the answer to eight decimal places. Why on earth would I want to do that? Well, we'll see. So the claim is this is geometric. 90 times a third is 30, times a third is 10, times a third is 10 thirds. That three in the denominator is kind of a giveaway that the ratio has something to do with thirds. Okay, so that's that's our common ratio. N equals 12, again, it's given. And so we can here we can really plug it in, because really, if you know A1, R, and N, you have got the formula. There's A1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Just plug it into the calculator. You get something suspiciously close to a simple number, 135. And this is why I asked for those many decimal places, because I want to make sure people are putting things in correctly, in particular the 12, the 1 third, and everything. Um, and you get something that's very, very close to 135, but not quite there. The reason for that is that if you actually keep going and adding more and more and more terms of the form 90 over 3 to a power, um, you are actually going to get closer and closer to the infinite sum, which is plain 90 over 1 minus 1 third. This guy goes away. And that is indeed 135. Okay, so a lot of these ones, when this is a, when the ratio is less than one, and you take it out pretty far, and this isn't super far, but pretty far, you're gonna often get a number that's very close to a very simple number, but not exactly that simple number, unless you're taking the infinite sum, which looks at the trend to which these more complicated numbers go. Okay, next one. Um, here's written out in summation notation, and there's this infinity symbol. Aha. This is exactly what I was talking about before. This is an infinite sum. The only kind of infinite sums that we know how to calculate are geometric. Arithmetic infinite sums never give you a nice answer. They always just go to infinity. Um, but arithmetic geometric sums can work if this number is between minus 1 and 1, and only if that's true. Because otherwise, you got end up adding up a bunch of numbers that don't get small. So a1 is 4, because it is written in exactly the standard way. If you don't trust that, just really plug in whatever this number is, plug it in explicitly into the formula. Because we have the minus 1 here, this all dies. It's something to the 0 power is 1. And this 4 is indeed a sub 1. Not trying to trick you here, but in other cases, it could be a little tricky. But if you're worried, plug in this number into this formula, and that's going to be a 1. So that's 4. The ratio is always just the thing that gets taken to a higher and higher power. 
that's 5 sixths. And so we just plug it into our A over 1 minus R formula, or A1. A is 1 over 1 minus R. Okay. And you get 24. Okay. Um, okay. And um, you can think about if you don't if you don't like infinite sums, we could just say this means that the sum from k equals 1 to 1,000 of this guy is going to be so close to 24 as you could never even tell the difference. Okay. But I haven't heard a lot of complaints this year about that. Okay. Here's a couple of extras that I didn't put on the official review. So here's another sequence, uh, a summation of a sequence. And this guy is arithmetic with a common difference. Wait for it. Pause it if you want, want to figure it out. Actually, pause it for like five minutes and figure them out yourself. Um, oh, you're back. Good. The common difference here is negative. It's minus 40. So here D equals minus 40. Okay. And what about, what else do we need to know? Well, we have the first and last, but we need to know the number of terms. So we need to just go ahead and say, okay, let's say A sub N is that last term, minus 600. That should be A sub 1, which is 1400, plus N minus 1. And that's a mystery. And then times a minus 40. Aha. We saw this in a previous example. When that's negative, you've got to be careful. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1400 from both sides. Oops. So minus 2000 is um, minus 40 times n minus 1. I'm not going to multiply that out yet because it's, that's, I don't want to do that. 50 equals n minus 1. n equals 51. So secretly, there are 51 terms in that sequence. And so the sum, sum at stage 51, is going to be 51 over 2. Actually, I like to write it with 51 there and the over 2 in here. Number of terms times cheesy cheating average. Be careful. That's a plus minus 600. Okay. And that turns out to be 20,400. Okay. Now, here's a really similar problem. 1,400 plus 1,360. It's the same sequence. I'm just going out a bit further to minus 1,360. I'll put this one in because if you're really thinking, you can get this one without any work at all. Notice what happens. This happens to be all the multiples of 40 going up to 1,400 and down almost the same amount to minus 1,360. There's a 0. There's a 40 and a minus 40, which will cancel. There's secretly an 80 here, whoops, which will cancel the minus 80. A 120, which will cancel the minus 120. Everything cancels except the 1,400. And so that one's just 1,400. You could work it out in, the simil in a similar way and find n and everything like that. But sometimes you can be a little more clever. Okay. Um, let's go on to at least, at least one more in this video. Determine the seating capacity of an auditorium with 40 rows of seats when there are 22 seats in the first row, 25 seats in the second row, 28 in the third row, and so on. And of course, the whole thing is in the end, so on. I'll have to figure out what that means. Well, 22 to 25 is plus 3. 25 to 28 is plus 3. If this means anything simple, it's got to be an arithmetic sequence. And that's a, a not implausible pattern for seats in an auditorium. It get, gets wider progressively as you go back. So you've got the first term. You've got the common difference, and, they've, and we've gotten the 40, okay? So we need to get the last term to use our wonderful shortcut formula, but that's given by the term formula. 22 plus 39 steps increases of 3. Add that up, you get 139, as it turns out. And um, then the on average, this says on average, there's 22 plus 139 over 2 seats in every row, and there's 40 rows, and you got it. Okay.